Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we are going to be looking at potential flow theory. A potential flow is a flow with zero vorticity. Zero vorticity means that if the flow is moving through a channel, for example, the fluid element does not experience any rotation or vorticity. It will move parallel to each other. This means that this fluid has no shear stress and therefore it is not able to interact with each other at different layers. This means that we can consider potential flow as an inviscid flow. Inviscid flow means that we can consider the viscous force that exists inside that fluid to be negligible. Now let me show you the difference between an actual flow and a potential flow. For example, if you have a cylinder here, and you have a flow coming from the left and this flow is going above the cylinder and at one point it's gonna detach from the cylinder it's going to look something like this and if the flow goes under the cylinder so it will look similar and it will detach over there and this is what we call actual flow and of course, behind the cylinder, you will have some kind of vortex where the flow interact with each other and mix with each other. But for potential flow, different things happen. Let me draw another cylinder. And same flow coming from the left. But if this is a potential flow, then you will have a very symmetrical flow. It looks something like this. Right, and this is what we call potential flow. So as I told you before that for potential flow, the viscous effect is negligible. And the flow has zero vorticity. In a way, you can look at potential flow as the ideal flow. So why this ideal flow or potential flow important to our analysis of fluid mechanics? Well, when you consider these two assumptions, that the flow has no viscous effect and it has zero vorticity, it means that we can simplify our analysis a lot and still obtain meaningful results. Of course, we always have to be careful because there will be differences between actual flow and potential flow. But in many cases, the differences are so little that we can still use the result from potential flow analysis to be used in actual engineering calculations. That is why potential flow is very important in the study of fluid mechanics. Now, let me introduce to you a concept that is called a potential function. And the symbol for potential function is phi. And because it is a function, so phi is actually a function of x and y coordinate or in polar coordinate, phi is a function of r and theta. And what I write here is the two-dimensional representation of a potential function. Of course, in the actual world, you will have three dimensions. So how does this potential function relates to our velocity? So the equation that relates potential function and velocity is v equal to del of phi. And we also know from before that our potential flow has zero vorticity. Now let's represent this zero vorticity in terms of mathematical equation. So zero vorticity looks something like this. Vorticity or omega is equal to the cross product of del and velocity and this must equal to zero. And from our incompressible continuity equation, we also know that del dot v equal to zero. And this is from incompressible continuity equation. So if I replace this velocity with this velocity, we will end up with del dot del phi equal to zero. And if I expand this equation, so this becomes del square phi over del x square plus del square phi over del y square plus del square phi over del z square equal to zero. And this equation is what we call a Laplace equation.
Now let me introduce to you to another concept in potential flow theory which is called a stream function. Okay. And the symbol for stream function is psi. And of course, psi is a function of x and y coordinates and also as a function of r and theta if it's in polar coordinate. Now, what is a stream function? So mathematically, stream function is represented as u equal to del psi over del y and v is equal to minus del psi over del x. This is just a mathematical equation for stream function. You will be using this a lot in the study of potential flow theory. But what does stream function physically means? For example, if you have a pipe that looks something like this, okay, and you have a flow that's coming in from the left. So a stream function is basically the mathematical representation of a streamline. And the streamline will look something like this. Okay, so each of the line can be represented as constant stream function. So this line can be represented as psi1, this line is psi2, and this line is psi3. So each line has its own stream function, and that's depend on x and y coordinate or r and theta coordinate. So moving on, let me introduce to you a very important equation, which is called a Cauchy-Riemann equation. And the reason Cauchy-Riemann equation is very important because it relates three things. It relates the velocity with the potential function with the stream function. So we need this equation in order to make sense of what happens between velocity, potential function, and stream function. Let's take a look. So Cauchy-Riemann equation says that u is equal to del phi over del x and also equal to del psi over del y. We've seen this before that del psi over del y is u. But Cauchy-Riemann equation says that u is also equal to del phi over del x. And v is equal to del phi over del y and also equal to minus del psi over del x. And of course, these terms are in Cartesian coordinate. So what happens in polar coordinate? Fortunately, Cauchy-Riemann equation also works in polar coordinate. For Cartesian coordinate, we have u and v, but for polar coordinate, we have vr and v theta. That is the radial velocity vr and tangential velocity v theta. And physically, what does radial and tangential velocity means? If you have a center of rotation, for example here, and you have a flow that goes around that center of rotation in this direction. So this will be your V theta or tangential velocity. This is V theta. So anywhere on the flow that is tangential is V theta. And radial velocity is actually a flow that goes outward of this center. Okay, so that is your VR, this is VR, and this is also VR. So in the case of a tornado, for example, where you have a flow that goes around circling the center of rotation, for this case, you only have V theta and you have zero VR. Because when the flow just goes around, there is no component of velocity that goes outward from the center. That means your radial velocity is zero. So you only have a tangential velocity in the case of tornado, for example. Now let's see what Cauchy-Riemann says about this polar coordinate. So Vr is equal to 1 over r del psi over del theta and also equal to del phi over del r. And for tangential velocity, V theta equal to minus del psi over del R equal to 1 over R del phi over del theta. And that is the Cauchy-Riemann equation for polar coordinate. 
So basically what you have here from cauchy riemann equation are four relationships that is very important because it combines the velocity, potential function, and also stream function. So now because of this equation, whenever you have a stream function, for example, you can easily get the potential function and you can also get the velocity. And if you have a potential function only, using this relationship, you can get the velocity and you can also get the stream function. And that is how powerful this cauchy riemann equation is. Now to demonstrate this, let's take a look at an example. So example one, if you are given a potential function, and this is phi equal to a inverse tangent y over x. And the question is now asking you to find the stream function. Okay, so find the psi. Now, how do we go about solving this? Do you think you can do it? I think it is now possible because we know the relationship between stream function and potential function. Now, let's take a look at this. If we take this equation, what you have is u equal to del phi over del x equal to del psi over del y. And we know that phi is equal to a arctangent y over x. So if I replace this in this equation, this becomes equal to del over del x. This is a arctangent y over x and this becomes when you differentiate a arctangent y over x you will get minus a y over x square plus y square and that is now your del psi over del y and obviously what you need to do next in order to find the psi is to integrate both sides of the equation with respect to y so what we'll do here is integrate this with respect to y. And you will end up with psi equal to minus a over 2 ln x square plus y square. And when you integrate with respect to y, of course, you may have to consider that this might have another function of x that you did not see when you integrate it. So you have plus fx at the end. So what we did here is actually we have solved this bit of the equation, okay? But we have not yet solved this equation, right? So now let's take a look at what happens if we differentiate the psi that we just found, okay? So del psi over del x is equal to, it's just differentiating all of this, okay? negative a x over x square plus y square and differentiation of this function. So this is df over dx. And according to this equation, del psi over del x must equal to minus del phi over del y. So this is equal to minus del phi over del y. Now, do we have del phi over del y? We know that phi is this one. So del phi over del y is equal to del over del y of a arctangent y over x. And this is equal to, before that, let's put our negative sign here. So negative ax x square plus y square. Okay, if you can't remember what is the integration or differentiation of tangent, sine, cosine, for example, you are welcome to go back and look at your integration table. Of course, it's difficult to remember all of this, but now that you know you have to deal with this, please go back to your integration table so that you know how to integrate arctangent, for example. Okay, let's carry on. So if I take this equation and rearrange it together, Okay, so this will be minus a x over x square plus y square plus df over dx equal to minus a x x square plus y square. 
And this means that my df over dx is equal to zero. So when df over dx is equal to zero, it means that my function f is actually a constant. So you don't have to worry about this f of x. Therefore, in the end, I believe that you can use this equation as your final answer. So when the question asks to find the psi by using the potential function that it has given you, your final string function is psi equal to minus a over 2 ln x square plus y square. So this will be your string function. Now, from this example, I think I've proven to you that when you are given a potential function and because of the Cauchy-Riemann equation, you can now find the stream function. So now it's time for you to familiarize yourself with the concept of stream function and potential function and how it interacts with each other using Cauchy-Riemann equation. Also, please work on this example again and again until you understand how to actually convert the stream function to potential function or to convert potential function to stream function. That is all from me for now and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.